This week on Quadriga, Germany's neo-Nazis, to ban or not to ban. The NPD, the National Democratic Party, represents the hard core of far-right politics in Germany. Party members are racist and anti-Semitic, and they glorify Germany's Nazi past. Now the country's constitutional court is set to rule on whether or not to outlaw the NPD. But Germany's legal system has set high hurdles for such a ban, and critics say such a move might backfire, giving publicity to a party that's already a waning force. So is a ban the right way to tackle the threat posed by the NPD? Coming to you from Berlin, Quadriga, the international debate. Your host, Melinda Crane. Hello and welcome to Quadriga. Will a ban be effective or counterproductive? That's what we want to talk about with three journalists who are following the discussion very closely. It's a pleasure to welcome the French author and journalist Pascal Huck. She's based in Berlin and has worked for the BBC, Liberation and a variety of German media. She says the NPD is not nearly as dangerous as the French National Front. And it's a pleasure to see Malte Lehming. He's the editor of the opinion page of the Berlin Daily Der Tagesspiegel. He opposes banning the NPD and says, in the struggle against right-wingers, a ban will just drive people into illegality. And finally, Hans Pfeiffer is with us. He is a colleague here at Deutsche Welle and has been reporting on far-right parties and organizations for many years. He says the NBD has to be banned. Otherwise, the party will be able to continue to use state funds to fight against democracy. Hans Pfeiffer, what exactly is so dangerous about the NPD? The fact is other right-wing extremist parties uh, have been far more vocal lately. They've been in the headlines. At least some of them have been indirectly uh, implicated in violence against refugees. So what's the preoccupation with the NPD? I think most dangerous, if we talk about the, this party, is not what they talk about publicly. Uh, because this you can always uh, talk about and if, if you like it or not, but it's the structures behind that. This party opened itself to very active, aggressive neo-Nazis. It, uh, it is kind of an assembly of anti-democratic, uh, very dangerous persons who fight against our open society and who are very violent when it comes to migrants, to Jewish communities, and to their political enemies. And this, this is what um, I think the part, what is so, is so dangerous about this party. But the fact is that the party has only 5,000 members. It sits in just one local parliament, and it has a single representative in the European Union parliament. That hardly seems like an uncontainable threat. This is right. I, I would agree. So this party is is not dangerous at the moment for the whole, for Germany as a whole society, for, for the society as a whole. But I think if you look, take a closer look to smaller communities where they successfully established their structures, their very racist structures, their, it already became a threat for persons, for people, for people's lives. And they are, they, they are not only talking uh, about uh, against migrants, against refugees, but they, are, they started to, to really attack their, their enemies. And this is what makes them still uh, quite, quite dangerous, I think. Malte Leming, given the current volatility in the public mood in Germany, given the presence of a very vulnerable population of refugees, and given the rising number of violent incidents against refugees, isn't there something to be said for that argument that the threat is real and growing? The threat is real and growing. Actually, we have a rise in, in, in right-wing uh, crimes in the last year of 30%. Uh, but it's not... There is not a, a clear connection between a party like the NPD and, as you mentioned, 5,000 members just represented in one of 16 federal states. And uh, the party has its up and down. It was much more represented in former times, so there is no dynamic from which you can conclude that this party causes more right-wing extremism. We have, we have right-wing moods. In Germany, actually, the initiative to ban the party started much earlier than we had the flow of refugees coming. So there is no timely connection between this. And um, there are high hurdles if you want to forbid a party, not just an organization. A party is protected um, by German law and uh, because it contributes to, 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 to the political society and the society as such. To forbid a party... You just you, you don't 
it's not um, enough to have anti-Semitic, xenophobic, racist remarks coming from them. But you have to prove that it is a threat for the German society as such, not just in singular states in the north of south and in East Germany, but to the society as such. And I just can't see that. And we're going to take a closer look at whether that is the case. Uh, Pascal, in your opening statement, you compared the NPD and France's uh, Front National or National Front. Has there been consideration of banning it? Yeah, they, we, I mean, the Front National was born in the 70s and became very, very successful in the 80s and 90s. And of course, several times, you know, it was considered should we, should we, especially as it was much more radical in the past than it is now. But recently, you know that the Front National at the last regional elections got 30% of the votes, which is enormous. And somebody said, oh, we should forbid it. And Marine Le Pen laid back very very calm and very self-confident said, please do it. Then instead of 30%, we get 60%. So it's a very dangerous thing. I mean, the Front National is not a, a, a little para phenomenon like uh, the NPD in, in Germany. It's a party which has been solidly implanted in the French political landscape for the past 30 years. Uh, and nobody at the moment, uh, you know, seriously thinks that it could be an idea to forbid it. 30% of the French people vote for it. But I I think that's an interesting point because if you wait too long mm. and a party is that powerful mm. like the Front National already has been, if, the, if you ban them then, you will have a real problem because they are already that big that that would be a real threat if you, at this point, uh, ban the party. But, but so if you want to protect the open society, you have to talk about a ban earlier if the, the if such a movement of such a party still is that weak <laughs> but that would that imply the, the, that the threat is growing and if you see the development of the npd mm. i can't see a growing threat coming from that party i see a growing threat arising from other right-wing organizations and parties in germany i see that but so so there is a a, a rising threat of right-wing extremism and crimes actually as we see in numbers but there is in the same hand a diminution of the danger coming from the NPD. Well, Hans Pfeiffer, in your research, what kind of connection have you seen between the NPD and these other right-wing groups, like, for example, the Alternative for Germany, the AFD, a political grouping which is now uh, probably set to gain significant representation in three local parliaments? Yeah, I think there are, uh, well, there are some, in their opinions, they have at some points, the same opinions on, on how to deal with refugees. But I think there's a... Most of the, or like the, I would guess, almost the majority of the members of the National Democratic Party have roots in already banned organizations. So they, so many of the, of, from the party board, they uh, are rooted in organizations who have been banned because of their aggressiveness, because of their violence, because of their affinity to Hitler Germany. And uh, this shows that below the surface of this party, there are these strong connections to violence, but they are really good in camouflaging themselves, they they will never. They are not dumb. This is, I think, this, that's a mistake done quite a lot of time by journalists because we think, come on, they are kind of, of Hitler affinated uh, people, and we should we can laugh about them because they are so marginalized. They are so it's such a tiny party. But I think you have to take a closer look because behind this surface. They have their strategies, they are very intelligent, they are very well educated and trained how to deal with the society, how to undermine the values of the open society and this is what makes them that dangerous. Open society is a key word. The standard argument against a ban is that the only way to defeat bad ideas is to confront them openly, in open democratic no. discourse. Yet despite confrontation with the Front National in France, its ideas absolutely are gaining credence. Uh, the party is looking set to make major gains in the next elections in France. Same goes here in Germany for the AFD, as I mentioned. Is it in fact the case that in, occur in the current climate, pragmatic democratic discourse is at an absolute disadvantage in dealing with strong right-wing ideologies? 
Well, in France, uh, you know, before, for a few years, you would vote Front National because of the economic situation, because uh, unemployment is very high, 10%, 30% by young people, uh, and uh, insecurity, uh, economic insecurity. These were the arguments, and people who would vote very steadily for the Front National because of because of these reasons. But now, with two uh, attentats in... in, in uh, two attacks. Two attacks in Paris in one year, with uh, the problem of immigration. And the, the main problem of the French people, when you ask them, the main source of worry is not anymore uh, the economy, but it's security. And this, of course, is the absolute basis of the argumentation of the Front National. So it's more the context uh, in, uh, in the country, the economic and, and the problems in the country which uh, make the bed of, uh, of the Front National. Martin Leming, what do you think? Democratic discourse at a disadvantage dealing with incendiary rhetoric and ideology? I, I can't see any, any threat to, to German society as such right now. I mean, we, we are in a very, very special situation. We uh, had the influx of one, more than one million refugees in just one year. Which, a policy which is supported by all parties represented in government, in the parliament, in the federal par parliament. Um, as a result, not a, or as a consequence, not as an intended but unintended consequence, there is a, the rise of a party like the AFD to 10%. Tell me one country in the world where democratic OECD country in the world where a development like this wouldn't lead to much more serious interruptions than we see. And if a party like the NPD, which is like it is, and I think Hans Pfeiffer described them very accurately, but it, it is like it is since decades. The camouflage, the threat, the strategy, all these things since decades. And if the result of this decade-old strategy is nothing more than 1% of the federal votes, but then I would say it's not as dangerous <laughs> as it looks. But objection. This is only true for white males like us. We will never feel, if I'm like a, a, a suit-wearing white male, I can go wherever I want in Germany without being in any danger of being harmed by party members. Yes. This is not true for black Germans. This is not true for migrants. This is not true for people being openly Jewish. They will face probably but black problems Germans with this and party. foreigners and any minority group has to be protected from, for example, the police. That's Why through a right. ban of a party? But they have also been protected by the, by the laws that there will be no party who is uh, uh, programmed to the attacks against people. But the biggest threat to asylum seekers and refugees in their homes and things like this is not coming from NPD people, it's coming from, from radicalized middle-aged, sometimes bourgeois, sometimes this and this. So to show there is a, there is a strong connection between NPD organization and activity and, and crimes against refugees in Germany is very hard to do. Nurtured by, the, by this party. May I just uh, suggest that before we go into more detail about the nature and the level of the threat, that we take a quick listen to the kind of rhetoric that we do hear from NPD leaders? Because the entire finance structure of this Jew Republic will collapse in the next two years. Strong stuff there, Malte Leming. Isn't it a bit absurd that under the German system, federal funding is provided to help a party like that? In other words, we are asking taxpayers to support that kind of talk. It is absurd, but this is due to, 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 the, to the way we support parties in general. We have uh, a legalized system that is supporting every party that exists, that is on the ballot, that can be voted for. Even the smallers, the uh, protect animals, don't eat meat parties and so on, are, uh, are, get money from the federal uh, state. So every party that is on the ballot and gets a considerable uh, uh, number of votes is, is supported by the state. As long as a party is not forbidden, it gets the support. But the argument to say we need to forbid or ban a party because it is supported, I can't see that as a real good argument. Hans Pfeiffer, every time there is an incident uh, against refugees or hate speech during one of the big rallies in Dresden by the Pegida protesters, we hear mainstream politicians condemn and deplore, but their rather rote protests hardly seem to have any effect. Is, is mainstream politics simply not doing enough to counter what we heard there? I would say so. 
they are not doing enough. Yeah, that's right. And uh, this is because in so many regions, we don't have problems with radical racists like we've seen here with this uh, one of the most infamous uh, party leaders of the National Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. So there are so many races where people don't get into contact with these problems, with these radical beliefs, or also with, uh, with demonstrations by uh, against refugees. So there are so many Germans, because these movements are in fact that tiny, never realized the real life of these, uh, how they really look. Uh, but this is, I think, this is a tricky point, because if you get into to contact with them, and if you are in a region uh, where those persons establish their structures, then you will turn your mind. And this is one reason why I think, especially those reasons in Germany where they have their experiences with this party, the, the National Democratic Party, their politicians strongly are in favor of outlawing the National Democratic Party because they say our experience is they're that dangerous that they quite successfully in, in some points undermine the values of our society and they are not they are not that tiny as, as we often see them. You were referring, of course, to Eastern Germany. I'd to like Eastern to come Germany, yeah. back to Eastern Germany in just a moment, but staying with the question of whether whether democratic institutions and systems as we know them are at a disadvantage in dealing with this kind of populism, with this kind of ideology. Pascal Hug, in two of the states that will be voting in March in regional elections, mainstream politicians have refused to sit down on a stage with representatives of the AFD party, also a right-wing party, not necessarily a neo-Nazi party, but with some pretty harsh rhetoric. Is that a really effective way to counter right-wing thinking? Well, we had this uh, question many years ago in France. Uh, are you allowed to invite at the podium this, uh, this television discussion like that somebody from the Front National? It, 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 uh, we had years and years of that. And now, uh, at every discussion, they are invited. Now, uh, the leader of the IFD, of the Alternative for Germany, is on the head uh, page of the Spiegel, the main uh, magazine here. So I think this is, this is a debate. There's no real answer to that. Uh, what is interesting in France is that, I mean, one of the main issues which frightens uh, the French people is, like here, is the refugee. And that our minister, Premier Minister Manuel Valls, has now announced 30,000 and not anymore, and really banged the door at Angela Merkel and said, uh, we're not going to follow your policy. So, you know, why is he doing that? Of course, he knows we have election next year. If he opens the door like Angela Merkel does, then uh, um, Marine Le Pen is the, is the, it's the first party in France and she has a very good chance of, uh, of becoming maybe the president of the French Republic. And it is quite amazing, I must say, as, as a foreigner looking at this country, how Angela Merkel remains steady on that. I mean, she is quite amazing because she, you know, alarms are everywhere. All these little parties uh, are, are, are gaining uh, votes in the election. Her popularity, which was always steady, always very good, is, is crumbling. And she still says, I'm going on with this politics and I'm not going to be influenced. And that's quite, quite amazing. Malta Leming, is there a risk that by banning the NPD, we actually give them more of a platform and more of a spotlight? One NPD leader says, look, the only reason you want to ban our party now is because facts are proving that we've been correct all along, saying the state does not have the influx of refugees under control. Isn't there a certain risk that we turn them into martyrs? I don't think so. I, I, I think they are... They are marginalized in a way that even though they might be banned or not banned, it doesn't contribute to a very large success for the next elections. I can't see that. Let me say I'm, I'm always puzzled by the notion that it shows the strength of a country if it forbids a certain party. I think it can even show the weakness of a society if it bans a party. It depends on the circumstances. I would say if we would live in Weimar times, then it might make sense to forbid one or the other party because it's so turbulent and so disruptive and the society as such is not uh, well organized or stable. But right now, the Federal Republic of Germany is a stable society, even though there are parts, and I agree totally, even though there are parts in the north and south of East Germany, which might seem not very unstable. But this is just marginalized places. The, the country as such is in a, is in a substantially good, good substance. So I would regard it would be a weakness if we don't see other methods, if we don't 
use other methods to deal with the with the right wing extremist party like the NPD. Let okay, us so. take let us Sorry. take a brief <laughs> look at one part of the country where, in fact, the violence against immigrants has tended to be concentrated and where, in fact, a group was able for 10 years to murder people of migrant background with impunity. I'm referring to the NSU trio of domestic terrorists. Let's take a look. A series of murders that shocked Germany. Between 2000 and 2007, 10 people were killed by the National Socialist Underground Group. Nine of them came from immigrant backgrounds. One was a police officer. These are the three suspected perpetrators of the right-wing terrorist attacks. Uwe Mundlos, Uwe Bernhardt, and Beata Chepa. Since May of 2013, the German Federal Prosecutor's Office has been trying to discover whether the three had help from others in the right-wing scene. One of those who stand accused is Ralf Wohlleben. The former NPD party functionary is thought to have been the most important member of the trio's support network. Is the NPD also involved in right-wing terrorism? Hans Pfeiffer, is the NPD guilty of more than simply verbal incitement to violence? What's your assessment on the connection between the NPD and the NSU that we just saw? I think they are guilty, but you have to, to take a careful look. If we, if we talk about connections between this self-proclaimed national socialist underground and the party of the NPD, because as we've just heard, there are single members of the party who seem to have supported these terrorists, uh, but uh, there are no proofs that the party as a whole and the structures of the party have supported. But I think that's an, a very good example because this party is really a clever party. They know if they would start with a with the organization as a whole to support terrorists, to support anti-democratic organizations, they would have been already banned years ago. So they always play with, with, with the laws and they know they accept people who support terrorists in their party. This is, I think, what makes them that dangerous. They do not actively, as a, as a party, support them, but they support persons who, who are in favor of terrorists or who once committed terrorist acts. In fact, though, Pascal Hug, if the NPD were to be banned, is there not a risk that they would go deeper underground, become harder to track, and in that way even more dangerous? Yeah, it's always, it could be very con contraproductive uh, and, and, and very dangerous. I mean, they could either have a, a reaction of, uh, you know, saying, well, they, they want to forbid, them, forbid us and then we're going to show them and, and be even more aggressive uh, than they are already. And then they could form each other under another name or go underground. And if they are underground, you can't control them as well as you do now. So it's always a catch-22. It's difficult. Malte Leming, in the application for a ban, the government says that in some parts of Germany, right-wing extremists have literally gained the upper hand, intimidating mainstream politicians, intimidating citizens. Does that not argue for taking this risk very, very seriously? It argues for taking the risk seriously. It, it argues as well for strengthening the police force to deal with these kind of risks. But banning thoughts, banning a party, banning, banning civil or banning discourse, let's say it like this, in the political spheres is not the right way to do it. It is, is this local place, it, it is not Germany as such. So I can't see that, that, the, that, the society, that the German society is threatened by this kind of party. So, closing arguments, uh, lady and gentlemen. Um, what do you make of the argument, if we were to ban them, we could f force them further underground, they're hard to track, we give them a spotlight, we turn them into mar mar martyrs. Would you still say, Hans Pfeiffer, we need this ban? I think it's a good point. We have to be very careful. We will never be successful fighting these ideas with only banning somebody. But I think we should not finance them. And this is why I think I'm in favour of banning this party because at this moment we finance a party that is fighting against this open society. In other words, we give them weapons. We give them weapons, exactly. Pascal Uc, where do you come down? Having heard the pros and cons, where do you stand? 
Um, I think it's I think it's a, it's it's a problem which you have to put in perspective and remember you're in Germany here. And for me, when I w look at these pictures and I think people you know profaning anti anti-Semitic uh, words in public in Germany, it has another connotation than in any other country. And uh, it's something the Germans have to watch out there. Indeed, Mata Liming, your constitution, the German constitution, places the inviolability of human rights, of human dignity higher even than freedom of speech. Is that not an argument for a ban? Uh, I don't think so, the, because the argument for a ban is not the inherent nature of the party as, as the only factor, but the threat the party poses for, for the society as such, and I just can't see that. Thank you very much to all of you for being with us today, and thanks to all of you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to see you. See you soon.